So yeah, my name's Stu Cran. Um, I'm the chaplain at Mountain Creek State High. I like to think of it as, as being God's represented in the school to care for kids and to help them live life well. I, I say to people that every year is the same, but there's not a day that's the same. And my week has a mix of programs so maybe breakfast programs, lunchtime programs. I've got a bunch of Christian crew who meet each Tuesday lunchtime, sort of a connect group. Uh, we've got another program at, at one o'clock for the juniors, which is just chaotic and noisy, but it's connecting them with each other with some good volunteers. We've got a mentoring program, so we've got adult mentors that come in, they volunteer their time to connect with a student. But I also do a lot of pastoral care stuff. So I'm a first base pastoral care, so we don't do therapeutic counselling here. And we support students in anything from understanding how to deal with a relationship breakup through to not wanting to live anymore and anything in between. So students come and talk to us either because they self-refer, so they walk up and say, hey, can I talk to you? They make an appointment or they just come in sometimes. Teachers refer students to us and parents call us. I think having chaplains in school is important from a Christian perspective because we're a Christian presence. We don't, we don't Bible bash. But we do have the capacity that if a student wants us to pray for them, I can ask a student if they would like me to pray for them, and I do. And if they say, yeah, that's fine. To, for them to have someone that they can confide in, that's not someone who's gonna get them into trouble, see, we're not disciplinarians, someone that can build rapport, have fun with them, so that they know we're a safe person to talk to, plus just having the opportunity to do really cool proactive stuff in the school that, that helps students have a better self-esteem, a better life, better relationships. Yeah, there's so, there's so many reasons why I think chaplains should be in schools. During the week, I'll hear stories that are heartbreaking. When I go home, I've got to, I've, I can't carry that. Do you know, I've got to switch off. So I, I certainly want to do something that contributes into the lives of young people um, in whatever way I can. So I love running camps. So, you know, you talked, I've been involved with running the Get With God camp, taking some of our senior high crew to Fraser Island. I love doing that because it's helping them connect with God. Uh, we've been renovating our house. We've lifted our house up and we're extending it to provide accommodation for senior students who can't live at home anymore. But they're young people often who are coming out of a dysfunctional home situation and just want to make a change. They're like, I'm not going to be like my parents. I'm, I'm going to make it. But then they move into a share house with young adults uh, you know, and the party lifestyle, they just end up dropping out of school, right? And and so for them to have a family that they can live with, not to be, um, you know, if they live with me, I'm not gonna be a parent, but you are living in my home. And I'll invite you in, particularly if you want to be mentored. If you want some support in budgeting and grocery shopping and cooking and doing basic life stuff, you want a space where you're encouraged and empowered. My passion, my heart in that space is also to be able to share about God, you know, about share, share my faith with them. Um, I previously worked as a, a pastor at a church down the Gold Coast and set up a mentoring program down there. When I was training manager, we trained mentoring. So I had this heart and passion for life touching life, getting close enough so to someone so that the Jesus in me can affect them. And so when I first started here, staff would come to me and say, hey, we've got these boys. Can you hang out with them? We just, we want them to be influenced by who you are. And I, so I started doing that, that's fine, I enjoyed doing that, but it just got too big. I needed to get other volunteers in to help me do life with these boys, to multiply what I was doing. At the moment it's a it's a one-on-one um, -on -one program, so a mentor gets allocated a student, they get matched, we spend a bit of effort doing that, and a lot of prayer around that, um, and they meet for a, just over an hour a week. We ask the mentors to commit for the rest of the year, that cycle, I have had mentors that have been with their students from grade 9 right the way through to grade 12 um, and on and beyond. In fact, one bloke helped that, his student uh, get a job as an apprentice. Um, they still catch up regularly, do you know what I mean? So that boy's dad died when he was eight years of age. So this bloke, mentor, was a bit like a surrogate dad for him, do you know? Um, great outcomes in that sense, but it's a relational based thing, it's really that simple. People say, why are you building a big house and you're near retirement? I'm not near it, I'm 53, so I'm heading towards it. I'm like, well, I don't want to sit on a rocking chair you know, on my deck in retirement. Like, that's so boring. I want to continue to use my space and our resources to, 
to, to love people. And for me, um, I'd be glad to move away from all the administration of this role and just do life with people. And discipleship, I think, comes out of doing life, you know. Mm -hmm.